Hey there, thanks for joining me today on the day where I wanted to talk about the things I made in 2023, both crochet and knit. I have to confess this is not a full list or a full showing of everything that I made and that's because I have a very bad habit of just not taking as many pictures as I would like of the things that I've finished once I've finished them before I give them away. I do make a lot of presents and donate things. So one of my goals for 2024 is actually to use Ravelry more often if you've been on my channel before. Uh, you know that I'm not the best at keeping up with Instagram and YouTube or just like anywhere on the internet to be honest. So I do want to document the things that I make a little bit better. But with that being said, I did make a list of the things that I remember making this year. And I of course don't have all of them with me at the moment because like I said, I do make a lot of gifts, but I will insert a picture. And we could start with the most obvious thing, which is this granny square blanket that's sitting behind me. I did actually show this in another video, um, but I hadn't finished it by that point, which at this point I have. So I did add a little border to it. It's just a block stitch border with all these little granny clusters in the middle. And it is just a bunch of randomly chosen colors put together. I just bought a bunch of yarn and just started picking colors at random. And then I just put together this blanket. Um, the thing that made me want to do it is because I fell in love with this purple that's used in the middle. And I got a, I think it's a Karen one pound, and that's what I just decided to link all of these together with. It's my first time doing the continuous join as you go method once I had all my squares done, and it was a lot of fun. I said in another video I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this because it is a little long and it would fit a twin size bed pretty well in my opinion. Since that video, um, I realized there is somebody that I could give this blanket to and they're going to love it. So. I do have to wash it so that it drapes really nicely and of course it's gonna like smell nice and feel nice for them. I already showed them a picture of it and they like it already. So that is technically, I'm cheating with this answer, um, but that is the final thing that I finished in 2023, except I actually kind of finished it in the first few days of 2024. But the bulk of it was done in 2023. <laughs> now onto my actual first project that I made in 2023. At least I'm pretty sure this was the first one. Oh gosh, I'm already getting jumbled. But it is this Granny Square tote bag. Um, this is an updated version of one that I made when I first learned how to crochet in 2021. The version that I had made was pink, blue, and purple, just alternating. And I loved it, but I had used acrylic yarn um, and I just wanted to try out using cotton, which isn't going to stretch as much as you can see. And I also wanted to try out paint box yarn. So I bought a bunch of paint box yarn. Uh, well, it was a gift from my mom for Christmas. And I decided to do, again, similar to this blanket, just choosing whatever colors I feel like and just going with it. At some point I had my friends choosing color combos for me. It was a lot of fun. Um, so then I made the straps two different colors and I did line the bag um, poorly because I hate sewing. <laughs> I said this before and I'll say it till the day I die probably unless a miracle occurs, but I really, dislike sewing. I use this tote bag every single week uh, when I go to my knitting group at the library and actually this bag led me to that group which is why I always bring it with me. I was in the library, usually I just kind of go in and out because I'm picking up the billions of holds that I put there but this time I kind of wanted to browse in a particular section and I noticed that there was a group of women sitting around and discussing what I thought to be discussing crochet and they were and somebody noticed my, my bag and she was like oh those granny squares are beautiful and I was so excited so they invited me to join them and so now every week I go to this group and we just kind of sit for two hours and talk about our projects and what we're working on give each other ideas talk about life and it's pretty cool. So I bring this with me every single time because it's a fond memory for me now. I would like to remake this. <laughs> I would do this again. Uh, this was before I saw the, the joy that's probably very obvious to everybody else of, you know, actually adding a border. So the rest of it, once you've put the squares together, I just put the squares together and was like, that's it, I'm done. Uh, but I think if I were to do it again, I would add another border around the edge. But it is one of my favorite bags and um, I do love a granny square, so I have no complaints about having more than one. We could continue on with some small ones, I think, but um, this is my beachy book sleeve. Usually I make a couple of book sleeves a year because they're so quick and easy to work up. Um, this time I saw this yarn at Michael's and it reminded me of the ocean um, with like bits of sand, kind of like when you're standing on the shore. This button that I absolutely fell in love with. And then to top it all off, this uh, fabric that I decided to line it with was too perfect to not use on this project. So 
Look at that, shells. Isn't that so cute? This was my first time doing a book sleeve where the book would be placed in this way so that the spine would be facing here rather than the way that I normally make it where the sleeve goes in this direction, the opening is here and you just kind of like put the book in that way because all of my other pre-made book sleeves are like that. It was a quick project. Uh, I'd probably do it again. Uh, hopefully I would be able to line it a little bit more evenly. But yeah, it's just a cute little sleeve and a quick project. Oh boy. Then we have all of the hats that I made, which I don't have all of them with me, but I do have one and that was this checkered bucket hat. This actually took me several attempts <laughs> to get right. The first time I made it, it ended up being a little bit too small. Uh, my mom loves absolutely everything that I'm working on and so as I'm working on something, she's always eyeing it as though she's going to steal it away from me. So as soon as I finished it and said, it's not the right size, she was like, I'll take it then. <laughs> It doesn't quite fit her correctly, but she makes it work anyway. Um, so immediately after, I tried it again. I changed up the pattern uh, just a little bit to be closer to a bucket hat pattern that I recognize a little bit better, that's a little bit more straightforward to me, which is why the brim is all one color, and then I just added one single uh, row of white at the end of it, just to add a little pop. I do love this hat. I I think that I have made some mistakes though. Uh, it makes me feel like a little mushroom, which is precious and fun, but I made the mistake of going through, so when I, when I got to the sides of the hat, like I started out with the very top and then I wanted to differentiate where the sides would be, so I went into the back loops only and then started going down the sides and that kind of separates it, like it makes a visible section. If you could see right here, it makes this like visible uh, separation between the top and the sides. And so I did the same thing with the brim right here. So it's like this raised section. I made the mistake of going through the back loop only there when I meant to go through the front so that it would pop out the other way. Uh, I did not realize this mistake until months later, <laughs> um, but it's okay because I, I caught it in time uh, for when I made some other hats. But this was my checkered bucket hat. Would love to redo this. I love the way that it turned out. I think it's a cute look. Then I have some others that I don't have with me right now, but I can show you pictures. Over the summer, I started making some daisy bucket hats. Uh, it was a remake of one that I had done 2022, but with acrylic yarn and it just kind of made my head really warm. So I wanted to try it again with cotton yarn. So the first one I made was for my friend's birthday. She said that she wanted a green bucket hat and she had liked the, the daisy that I had made. So this was the one that I had come up with. After I made it, I ended up liking it so much that I made one for myself, which is the one that you're seeing here. And then I made it again in rainbow, which I don't know if I have a picture of, but it's the same thing, just in rainbow. <laughs> Since then, I have bought some blue cotton yarn that I wanted to try making a daisy hat with. I haven't done it yet, I don't know why, but hopefully this year I will be wearing the blue daisy hat. Another wearable that I made, which is kind of similar to the one that I'm wearing right now, except this is my Melody, but I made myself a pink vest for Valentine's Day. Um, it's just a, a very simple <laughs> pink vest. This was my third time making a vest. Uh, this was knitted. It went by so fast. It was such a relief, but I was rushing because I wanted to wear it for Valentine's Day. So when I finished the, um, the arm pieces here, I didn't bind off the same way that I would um, for the, the bottom portion. Like I took the time to do a very particular um, cast off or bind off at the bottom and I was just in a rush. So I did a regular one for here. It doesn't really matter. It just has less um, stretch, which is fine because this is a giant space for my arm. But I do prefer the way that it would have looked if I had done a regular uh, bind off. I mean, that's just how it is. It's fine, not a big deal. Um, next time I make a vest, I'll just do it better. This was, I think it was Wool Ease, not the thick and quick, but like the worsted version. Um, they have this like heathered uh, pink yarn that I fell in love with. So I decided to make it with that. It's half acrylic and half wool, I believe. Uh, and if you saw my video from last year of the things that I made uh, throughout 2022, you'll have seen that I accidentally felted <laughs> my second vest, which was one of my favorite things. Um, I had made that out of like 100% wool. Thought it was safe to put in with the rest of the laundry. It was not, it was not, and it felted. I was very sad about it. This uh, is totally fine to wash and it's a beautiful color that I adore. I love wearing this vest and I would love to make some more. Then a wearable I haven't really spoken about a lot in my vlogs, but it is this, how can I show you this? <laughs> uh, this hexagon cardigan. Um, 
I guess the best thing I could do is just kind of put it on. Um, the hexagon part starts here in the underarm and then you just continually work out until you'll reach the end of the um, hexagon and then you just kind of build up from there as you can see here with the sleeves. I don't have a lot of room, but I'm doing my best here. <laughs> Sorry if the view is lackluster. At the front, I just kind of did um, for the button band that has no buttons, so I don't know if you would actually call it that, uh, but I just did a few rows of single crochet all the way around. I will link the video that I used um, to make this uh, hexagon cardigan in the description. In fact, uh, I am a very visual uh, learner and I prefer visual patterns and video patterns, so I will link everything down in the description. If you see a pattern that you like, I'll let you know how I did it. <laughs> I love this cardigan. Um, it's very warm, so I kind of don't want to wear it right now, but it's perfect for the springtime. You have to find kind of the right balance of temperature for um, crocheted cardigans in my opinion, especially if it's a granny stitch in some form because you will have these little um, holes for the air to go through. That's not gonna keep you from you know being warm or anything like that, but the air will go through a little bit. So it, it allows you to feel the breeze and it's really nice, but I just feel like you have to find the perfect temperature to make wearing it so ideal. <laughs> this was made with Karen Blossom Cakes, I believe it is, and I will leave the yarn details below in the description as well. Okay, let's get into some blankets. These are the ones that I can show you before we get into the ones that I don't have because I donated them. <laughs> the first one here is this little lap blanket, um, but it's like my mom's oceany blanket. So she keeps, like I said, she just keeps stealing everything that I make. She's like, is that for me? Is that for me? Is that for me? And eventually I just decided to make her another blanket. She does have one already, but um, it was meant to be decor for the living room and she loved it so much that she wanted to use it as a blanket even though it is far too small to be used as a blanket for anything. I felt very bad about it and I was like, if I make you another blanket, will you stop using that? I made her this. I'm not gonna unfold it. This is pretty much the, the same thing the whole way through, uh, but it is a seed stitch blanket. So I knit this. It took me several months because I just kept putting it down. It was made with two uh, Karen Blossom cakes in the color Caribbean, pretty sure, Caribbean Sea. The first cake absolutely flew by, but the second one, I just started dragging my feet. I started working on the, the bucket hats, and this was supposed to be a Mother's Day gift that turned into a pretty much nearly a birthday gift for her, which is in September, so <laughs> um, my bad. But she does love this blanket. Um, she wraps it around herself all the time. I'll put up a picture on the screen. She, she loves this thing. So I'm glad that I made it. And then another lap blanket that I adore, and this one's mine, so I use it all the time, um, is this rainbow basket weave blanket that looks more like patchwork, to be honest. But that's fine. I, from afar, it looks a lot more like what I intended it to be. But yeah, it's just this rainbow, rainbow blanket. I'm holding it the wrong way, but <laughs> you get the gist of it, right? I used a Karen anniversary cake for this, and I just can never resist those giant rainbow cakes. So um, I worked on this for, I don't know, it was about a week maybe. Um, it worked up really fast because the, the yarn is thick, and it's one of my favorite things to wrap myself up in when I'm working in the living room and just feeling a little bit chilly. I have another blanket here, but I really don't want to pull this one out because it's thick, and I just don't feel like dealing with that mess right now. But this year, for the first time, I tried finger knitting a blanket. And this was something that I was curious about because every time my boyfriend and I went to Michael's, he would pick up um, the Bernat blanket yarn, the really thick one. He would just like put his hands in it and he, he adored it. And I was like, would you want a blanket out of that? Cause he, he wanted to make one. He doesn't know how to knit or crochet besides like very, very basics. He said yes eventually. And I just kept thinking, well, when he comes over, what if he had something nice to wrap himself up in? So I ended up uh, just making a blanket out of that yarn. He chose the yarn, he bought me the skeins of it, and I just got to work on it. It was a lot easier than I anticipated. It took me about two hours, a little under two hours. Um, I will put some pictures up on the screen of what it looked like. Um, he loves it. Every time he gets a little chilly when he comes over, he wraps himself in it, like cocoons himself in it, and he's immediately warm. He's like, this is such a warm blanket. He loves to kind of like, put his hands through the stitches and just kind of hold on to it like that. 
and it's great. I love it. My mom actually ended up loving it so much that her and my uncle decided let's all chip in and make one of these blankets or you know commission me kind of <laughs> to make this blanket for my grandmother for Christmas and she ended up loving it. I'll put in like a little picture or video of her wrapped up in it also. That seems to be the thing that people do once they get these these blankets in their hands. She says she's always cold and now she's gonna have this to kind of like drape over her lap. It's a fairly small blanket. It's uh, only about five skeins of yarn. Yeah, it, it really worked up very quickly and they were fun projects I just need a better surface to work on when I do them because uh, The biggest surface that I have right now is my bed But I, I have a loft bed and so I'm like, you know Packed up against the ceiling and so my, my posture is horrible when I'm working on these blankets. It's not a fun time for me after <laughs> It's not a good time. I'll do it again eventually just Better circumstances, hopefully. <laughs> there are three more blankets that I don't have with me. I ended up donating. I brought them to some of the ladies in my knitting group or my crochet group, crafting, whatever it is, the library group, um, because they regularly donate to several places. So I just kind of brought it to them and I said, use your best judgment, like wherever you feel like sending these off to. Um, they were kind of scrap projects with yarn that I just had, you know, kind of lying around and I wanted to make something fun with them. It always ends up being a granny square, always some form of a granny stitch. So I have one that I did in blue and white or blue and off-white, I guess. Um, that was sent out for me already. Another one in pink, purple and white or cream. I think that was. And I also had one done with a Karen Cotton cake in this like beautiful rainbow colorway. Loved that one. I forgot the name of that stitch. Everyone keeps telling me in the comments every single time and I always forget. I think it might be lemon peel stitch, but it's very cute. And yeah, that was also sent off for me too. They were about lap blanket size, but like a small lap blanket or like a small baby blanket. So I just worked up until I you know, couldn't use the yarn anymore. This year I finally tackled knitting cables. Uh, it is so much less intimidating than I thought it was going to be. So I made two scarves with it. Unfortunately, I don't know if I have a picture of the first one I made with it because like I said, I'm terrible about this kind of thing. Um, but it was a scarf that I made for my dad for his birthday. It's a very classic looking scarf and it was, I think, a very good introduction to cable knitting because it was a very simple cable pattern. And yeah, I, I followed along just fine. I do have one picture of it when it was in progress, so I guess I can put that there, although it's not the best photo of it. And then the second time that I did it was a heart cable stitch for my boyfriend. I've been wanting to do this for a while now. I thought it would be cute if we had matching heart scarves. Uh, the matching part is still in progress. I haven't made my scarf yet, but I have made his. So I'll put a couple of pictures here. Um, he's not really a scarf kind of guy, but when I mentioned I had wanted to make one for him, he was like, but I can be. <laughs> so here's him wearing it. He kind of like drapes it around and uses it to protect his face. Um, for days that it's not gonna be like too intensely cold that he has to wear something more like heavy duty, but you know, for days when there's a little bite to the air, then I think it keeps him sufficiently warm. It was one of the yarns that I brought back from Japan. It's the Mona yarn, so it's a billion different things <laughs> in that, uh, like I think it was wool, there's some cotton, there's some acrylic, that, like everything is in there. I have to find the label again. I remember buying this and thinking this is not my usual colorway, like not the kind of thing that I usually um, am drawn to. Usually it's like bright colors or pastels or things like that. But something about this just felt very earthy to me and uh, earthy things just automatically remind me of him. So I thought it would be cool to use that for his scarf. I am very happy with the way it turned out. I do wish I had made it longer, but I didn't know how much yarn I would need for one half of the scarf. So I was working up the hearts in uh, the first direction. And then at that point I would start working them in the opposite direction. And I would just, you know, count how many hearts I had made up and then just do the exact same thing, the same amount of times the other side. But I didn't know like how much I would be taking up. I'm not very good at that kind of thing. So I just did my best. I did about 17 hearts in each direction and I did have a good amount of yarn left over. So I am a little sad about that. I wish I had made it longer, but he seems happy with it. It, it works out fine for him and 
he seems to love every single mistake that I make. Like he does not think it's a mistake at all. I see the flaws in like everything that I've made as gifts, but I think that's just how all creatives are. You're always going to see your own mistakes first and glaringly, but uh, the people that love you and the people that you know care about you and see all of the wonderful things you're putting out into the world, they only see amazing things. So. Uh, he loves it. I am going to start my half soon so that we can match with them on Valentine's Day. My scarf will be made out of this like, it's more pink toned, like it's just several shades of pink and I think it's a little bit glittery, it's got like a little shimmer to it. Um, I will link my Japan yarn haul video if you want to see it because it's, it's in there somewhere. Um, but we're gonna have the matching scarves and I'm so excited. <laughs> Future Nikki cutting in to whatever segment I'm in the middle of at the moment to put in one more project because I forgot to mention this before I got to the end of the video but I made these fingerless gloves slash convertible mittens for my best friend for Christmas he had gloves like this when he was in high school and I remember him wearing it all the time he had this and another pair of um, convertible mittens but I think this pair was his absolute favorite and I joked what if I made them for you again he was like yeah actually you should <laughs> so I did, that was his Christmas present this year. The original plan was to knit them, but I was so busy with other Christmas prep that I just knew I wasn't going to be able to finish this in time unless I crocheted them instead. It would be much faster. So that's what I ended up doing. It worked up a lot faster than it would have if I tried to knit them. They look fine. I would do these again if I could knit them like with time, <laughs> you know, taking my time with it. But I guess the important part is that he liked them they're gonna keep his hands warm. I, I tried them out a couple times, I kept my hands warm. And then to fasten the back where the uh, the mitten portion uh, rests against your hand before you um, unbutton it and put it over your fingers. I put cat buttons there because he loves cats. So uh, nobody in the world has these mittens, gloves, whatever. So I am trying to take solace in that fact. <laughs> um, I made something that nobody else has except for him and he liked them. and. That's fine. And then the final thing that I wanted to share today, which I unfortunately do not have with me because this was a gift, but um, it is absolutely my favorite thing that I have made in 2023. And that is the Scandi Meadow Crochet Blanket by Made by Anita, which I will put a picture of here. When I tell you that working on this was such a joy, the colors were absolutely lovely to work with and seeing them come together was, I'm not gonna lie, a little bit of a trust the process kind of moment. I didn't have the exact yarn that the pattern was using, so I was substituting it. My best friend picked out the yarn for me because this was a present for his mom. So we went and chose the colors uh, ourselves and some of them I was like I don't know if it's gonna go together like they do look nice together but I was worried that working with them would be different but by the time I finished it I was absolutely in love I could not stop looking at it I could not stop holding it I wanted to use it the most important thing was that she ended up loving it um, it is exactly her vibe like I know you guys don't know her but I know her so trust me it was exactly her vibe you know um, and so I, I think she really enjoyed it um, I, I visited uh, a couple weeks ago and she had it like draped across her bed. It was very sweet. 10,000% would make again, but I definitely need a break <laughs> from a, a long project like that. I do love making blankets and I want to make more of them in 2024, but that one was a lot more intricate than any of the other blankets that I've been working on. Because as you can see, I've just been putting together a lot of granny squares. So <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm ready for anything a little bit more complicated than that for a little while. That's about it for everything I made in 2023. Of course, like I said, it's not everything that I made this past year, but um, these are the significant ones. In 2024, I really hope to get better about taking pictures and I really want to use Ravelry more. I want to keep track of the projects that I'm working on, my progress on them. I do keep a uh, craft notebook or whatever you want to call it um, to keep track of what I'm working on and really get into the details of the project that I'm working on step by step by step but I do want to find some way to organize my to make and recently completed I was kind of thinking of trying this out on Notion because like I said, I am a very visually driven person. So if you use Notion to organize your projects, let me know how that goes for you. If you have any suggestions for me, also let me know. <laughs> That's all for today. Thank you once again for joining me and hopefully I will be seeing you very soon. Um, be safe, take care, and bye. <laughs>